Over the weekend, the crowd at a Trump rally booed COVID vaccines. And then this morning, the FDA finally granted full approval to the Pfizer vaccine, which is huge news in the campaign to get more people vaccinated. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Polls have shown that a sizable portion of Americans who remain unvaccinated might be persuaded to get the shot if the FDA granted it full approval. So far, the vaccines have been distributed under what's known as an emergency use authorization. And a poll earlier this month found that three in 10 of the unvaccinated report that they would be more likely to get vaccinated if the FDA moved vaccines from emergency use to full approval. More than half of the unvaccinated are also unsure what the status of FDA approval is, Approval also offers an opportunity to clear up substantial public confusion. And look, I'll admit, it can be confusing to follow. We all wish the FDA and the CDC could be more like the SFC, which is an organization where people speak <laughs> clearly. Trying to make sense of all the announcements and updates and guidelines from the FDA and the CDC can make you feel like an out-of-towner reading one of those signs about service changes on the subway. Due to service improvements, B and D trains will be running on the F and C lines from DeKalb to 15th Street, and on the Z and G lines from Hoyt Shimmerhorn to Yakety Sacks from midnight to 3 a.m. Thursday through Sunday. <laughs> Personally, I did not care what kind of authorization the vaccine had. The second they said I was eligible, I lined up outside. Javits, like I was trying to get tickets to SNL the week BTS was on, or the week I hosted. Should have seen the sidewalk outside 30 Rock. Seth Myers. I thought that guy was too good for an audience. And that's our entire annual animation budget. <laughs> the point is experts have predicted that full FDA approval of the vaccines could help persuade some of the unvaccinated to get their shots. Well, this morning, the FDA finally granted that full approval to Pfizer's jab, which is huge news and a big boost to the vaccination campaign. And not only does it now have full approval? It could even be marketed under a new name. Breaking news, the FDA has granted full approval to the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. This is a key step in getting more Americans vaccinated. It comes more than nine months after the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine was administered in this country. The decision could motivate millions of Americans who still have not re received a vaccine to finally get the shot. The data is behind it. It saves lives, it keeps people out of the hospital. We are now learning that that Pfizer vaccine for COVID will be marketed under a new name. It will be called Comirnaty. Comirnaty is the new name that will be marketed uh, for the Pfizer COVID vaccine. This is amazing news that will hopefully convince more people to get vaccinated and we should all be thrilled, but also huge news that I guess we finally ran out of pharmaceutical names. What's up with Comirnaty? <laughs> Did the approval catch Pfizer so off guard that they yelled out a name before they were ready? I go with Comirnaty! <laughs> also, it already had a great name, Pfizer vaccine. I mean, I understand using a complicated name like Viberzi or Zyfaxin for IBS drugs, so you don't have to ask your doctor about, I don't know, diarrhea be gone, although. <laughs> It all goes out the window when they have to have mascots that are literally intestines. You know what would be a good mascot for a vaccine drug? A wallet with a vaccine card sticking out of it because they don't fit. The FDA better never approve this dumb <laughs> shape. Now you might be wondering how they came up with this name. Apparently the name is coined from COVID-19 immunity and then embeds the mRNA in the middle, which is the platform technology. And as a whole, the name is meant to evoke the word community. <laughs> so it actually like makes sense, dude. God, it's like a riddle Tom Hanks would have to solve in the Da Vinci Code to find out the location of the Holy Grail. It's in Toledo. Wait, oh, I don't think we did this right. There's so many different words embedded in this name. It's giving me flashbacks to yesterday's New York Times spelling bee. I was one word away from genius. You're telling me I missed tall? Screw you, spelling bee. I'm going back to Ken Ken. By the way, it is possible to have a much better name. You know what Moderna's vaccine is called? Spike Vax. Hell yeah. It sounds like a vaccine that protects you from COVID and gives you a mohawk or one of those sketchy boner pills they have at the bodega. Spike Vax sounds like the drugs teens are using in a YA sci-fi series called, I don't know, the Nest World Chronicles. 
the point is, this is huge news, and it will hopefully be super helpful in persuading more people to take the vaccine. Of course, another thing that might be helpful would be getting Donald Trump, the leader of the Republican Party, to tell his supporters to get it, given that just 55% of Republicans say they're already vaccinated for COVID-19. For months, friends and allies of Trump have been desperately trying to persuade him to promote the COVID vaccine to his supporters. And promotion is the one thing he should be good at. He is a salesman and a marketer, and it's not like he needs full FDA approval to push a product. Let's not forget, Trump used to sell health products like scam vitamins he marketed through something called the Trump Network. Among other claims, the Trump Network asserted it could use a urine test to recommend customized nutritional supplements. The business mogul encouraged people to take an expensive urine test, which would then be used to personally tailor a pricely monthly concoction of vitamins. And if there's anyone you can trust to tailor something to your specification, it's old bag suit here. I do like the idea that a bunch of people sent Trump their urine in the mail and he had to figure out what to do with it because you know Trump wouldn't just throw it away. He'd come up with the dumbest and most illegal solution to make money. Let's sell it to teens to use before they take drug tests. We can give it a catchy name like Comernity. <laughs> Trump had no qualms at all about pushing sketchy vitamins and yet for a month he resisted attempts by friends and allies to convince him to promote a life-saving vaccine to his supporters. According to four people who independently spoken to Trump about a potential pro-vaccine campaign, the former president has shown little interest in tying his name to broader efforts to get people inoculated. Senator Lindsey Graham, a top Trump ally on Capitol Hill, told the Associated Press that he encouraged Trump to speak up and to be aggressive and say, take the vaccine. Oh, Lindsey, haven't you learned by now? It only goes one way. Trump doesn't listen to you. You take orders from him. Trump's like the big city businessman in a Teddy C. Williams play who moves into town to buy up all the land, and Graham's the little boy who does one-off jobs for him, hoping Trump will toss him a nickel. Mima, Mima, Mr. Trump said he'd give me a job in New York City if I helped him steal the oil lease from the Hendersons. No, you can't come with me, Mima. I'm gonna make a name for myself, and I don't want you bumming everybody out with your carpal tunnel sleeve. <laughs> That's not to say Trump doesn't listen to anyone. He just listens to the last person who spoke to him. Like when Graham told Trump to promote the vaccine, I'm sure Trump agreed, and then he probably turned around and took a phone call from some anti-vax nut job like Mike Lindell, a Trump friend and ally who was so virulently anti-vaccine, he actually got muted at the Conservative Political Action Conference earlier this year. In Israel right now, from the prime minister on down, we don't know what happened, but obviously he congratulated Biden. But after that, we got a little suspect. Well, he, they're right now with the vaccine over there, they're making the whole country take it. So you can't go in shopping malls, you won't be able to get a job. And if this happens, it's the start for the world, the worst thing that could happen to this world. What do you care what someone else does? If that person wants to come to a mall and they don't want to get vaccine, this is our bodies. This is Mark of the Beast stuff, and I don't care. I'll just put it right out there. This is revelation. I mean, if they're going to make them do that over in Israel, and why do you think they went to Israel first? What? You know, that's kind of strange. <laughs> this is weird, guys. Um, um, it actually started, the list started in Spain. Uh, it started in Spain, where Spain started putting people on this new world list. They're telling you, wear a double mask and do all this other stuff. Let me tell you, that's not... I mean, I bet he was mad they cut his mic, but he also had to be mad with the picture they put up next to him while he's talking. Don't put up the picture of me hugging the pillow like it's my lover. Not when I'm talking science. I mean, they cut off his mic, but I feel like it's also possible his mouth just never stops moving even when he's done talking. If he really wanted to scare people off the vaccine, he should just tell people he got it. Oh, wow, you took the vaccine and now you're like this? Well, thank you for the heads up. And even Trump himself, when he's taking credit for the vaccine, can't help but use it as an occasion to criticize Biden as he did last week on Fox Business. I'm very proud of the vaccine. I've taken the vaccine. I'm very, very proud of it. At the same time, some people don't want to take it. And you know, when I was president, you didn't have this problem with people not wanting to take it. They don't take it because they don't trust Biden and they don't trust the Biden administration. People don't trust Biden. I mean, say what you will about the guy, but he's way more trustworthy than you, according to both polls and common sense. If you ask Trump about vaccines, he'd end up rambling about Hillary's emails or windmills killing birds. But with Biden, you know he's not holding anything back because he immediately blurts it out. His aides must watch him talk to reporters the same way you watch your grandpa talk to your coworkers at your wedding. <laughs> what was he saying to you guys? Well, we just asked him if he was proud of you, and then he told us about the time you peed your pants in Little League. 
So for months, Trump routinely rejected pleas to promote the vaccine. And even when he did talk about it, he used it as an opportunity to criticize Biden. He associates himself with anti-vaxxers and outlets that traffic in vaccine conspiracy theories and lies. That's the political movement he and his supporters in the GOP and in right-wing media have cultivated. So it should come as no surprise that when Trump told his supporters at a rally over the weekend that they should get the vaccine, well, they did not react well to it. I believe totally in your freedoms. I do. You got to do what you have to do. But I recommend take the vaccines. I did it. It's good. Take the vaccines. But you got... No, that's okay. That's all right. You got your freedoms. But I happen to take the vaccine. If it doesn't work, you'll be the first to know, okay? I'll call up Alabama. I'll say, hey, you know what? But it is working. And that really illustrates the core problem of the Trump movement. Yes, his followers listen to him, but he also listens to them. In fact, he doesn't just listen to them. He's desperate for their approval and terrified of pissing them off. Take the vaccine. Boo! You didn't let me finish. Take it to the trash and throw it away. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Trump's obviously not a man of convictions. He and his allies have cultivated a political movement that boos a life-saving vaccine. It's sickening. Months of relentless lies and conspiracy theories about vaccines from their favorite media politicians and pillow salesmen and outlets has led to this. It's like Maury, except instead of an ex-boyfriend who refuses to accept the results of a paternity test, they're booing vaccines. Meanwhile, the rest of us see that. We say, What? <laughs> <laughs> Not the picture with me in the pillow. Ah, oh, this has been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses. And they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe. Get vaccinated. We love you.